tiny NAS has room for up to eight M.2 NVMe SSDs, plus it supports 10 gig ethernet, there's an eight core processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, and a ton to love in this little system. There is a lot to cover in this relatively small NAS, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the TerraMaster F8 SSD Plus. That plus in the name means that we get twice as many cores, we get more memory, and a better system, I think, overall. And having tested this NAS out for quite a bit of time, I would say that this may even have too much performance in the CPU. By the end of this review, you're definitely gonna see some awesome things that TerraMaster did to make this. This is probably one of my favorite designs for these all flash NASes. But on the other hand, there are some kind of funky things that I wish that they would fix in a $799 NAS. I know some folks are immediately going to freak out at that price and say $799. There is a $599 version, which has a lower end processor and half, basically half the cores, half the memory, and I think is actually gonna be fine. Of course, they dropped the prices of both models by $100 between when we filmed this video and when it is going live. Cool. But the other side to this is that if you're spending $800 on the NAS, you're most likely putting four terabyte M.2 SSDs in there. So you're probably spending like $2,000 on M.2 SSDs anyway. And before we get too far, I just wanna say thank you real quick to TerraMaster for getting us this unit that we can review. But we're also using like $2,000 of NVMe SSDs in here that we had to go buy. And I just wanna say thank you to all the STH YouTube members for their support by joining down below. You can help us go and buy all the materials that we need to go and test these things. And I also just wanna say thank you to all those that have already subscribed to our new Substack. We have a Substack that's really more for professional investors, really folks buying a lot of stuff in the data center, enterprise space, or investing or whatever. If you can subscribe at work, that'd be awesome too. With that, I think let's get to the hardware because there's a lot here. Okay, now on this little tiny system, three of the sides are super boring and three of them are actually kind of cool. So the three boring sides, let's get done with those first. One says TerraMaster, the other says TerraMaster, and the front says F8 SSD+. Plus. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get to the more exciting thing and let's start with the rear IO because I think that's probably one of the most exciting bits about this. And I know a lot of folks are probably gonna see this kind of form factor and think, oh, I should go run this horizontal, but it's really meant to be placed vertically in a space. And so all the ports are oriented and are all labeled for that vertical orientation. But in terms of ports, we have USB-C and also two USB type A ports. These are all 10 gigabit, so USB 3.2 gen two ports. The next port that we see is a 10 gigabit network port. Now this 10 gigabit port is powered by a Marvell AQC 113C. And that's a pretty well known 10 gigabit ethernet NIC, but the other really cool thing about it is that it works particularly well in a system like this. Now there's also an HDMI port on the back. Now this HDMI port can come in handy if you just need to go do setup, you can actually plug it in and get to a terminal immediately. Now of course there are other uses for an HDMI port, but that's just kind of what we used it for really getting that local console access. The next thing that you'll see is a standard 12 volt DC power input. This is awesome. One thing I wish that TerraMaster did was have like a little hook or something just to be able to secure the power adapter or the power our input like to the NAS so you don't like accidentally pull it out. That would cost a couple extra cents to go and put that extra plastic in there. And I wish that they just did something like that. The last feature you probably see is this little thumb screw. This is how you get inside the system. We'll show you that in a sec. Now let's just get to the other sides real quick. When you look at the top of this, you're gonna see that this is just a giant vent. Okay, now getting to the bottom of this, you're gonna see something that's kind of cool. Number one, you're gonna see these two fans and you're also gonna see these giant rubber feet. Now you're gonna start to understand why you have this orientation and it's really designed to be upright like this is because the idea is I think they're actually taking air from the bottom, blowing it up through the case and allowing the heat to escape out the top. And so what that practically means is that the fans have to be raised away from the surface that they're against, right? Like the desk that's here. And so you have these kind of like giant, just rubber feet on the bottom of this. Now, something that we always get is folks that say, hey, you know, I could go build my own NAS that's the same size or smaller or whatever for less money and all kinds of stuff. And this is the Asus Hyper M.2 by 16, I think it's PCA Gen 4 card. And you just kind of see like, yeah, I mean, this is smaller, but this, if you have two of these in a system, you know, are you really that much smaller than the system? Probably, but not by a ton. What these do give you is a lot better performance. So if you have higher speed networking, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna make your own NAS rather than use a low end 10 gig NAS like this. But I digress. Let's get inside the system and show you just how cool it is. Now to get inside the system, I'm actually just gonna show you this because uh, it's so easy and I'm gonna show you what not to do as well because I think that's 
also important because I screwed up the first time I did it. So step one is that you remove the little thumb screw on the back. And then once you've done that, here's the pro tip. The idea is that the entire center section of this comes out of this plastic shell. So what you do is you literally just go push from the fans on the bottom and it pops right out. I mean, it's ridiculously easy. Nobody tells you to do this, but um, you know, that's the way you should do it. So the first thing you're gonna see is that with this plus unit, we have a 16 gigabyte DIMM. This is a single memory channel system, so 16 is pretty good. In the specs, it says it can go up to 32 gigabytes, but frankly, 16, I think for a NAS like this is plenty. The non-plus version only has an eight gig DDR5 SO DIMM, and frankly, if I got that one, I would just spend the money to go get 16 gigs. Something that I think TerraMaster did really well, and much better than the ASUS store folks did, we looked at the flash store units previously, is that they have kept the fans on the same assembly as the motherboard. So you don't have to like undo a cable to be able to get in and like get to this or anything like that. Like this is super easy to service. So on each side of the system, you're gonna see that we have a total of four NVMe SSDs, which gives us of course our eight NVMe SSDs total. Now, something just kind of interesting about these eight drives, right? So we have four and they are on this side. So you're gonna see this is my right hand uh, where the M.2 slots are. If you go to the other side, the M.2 slots are actually on the completely other side of the chassis. So they actually are like kind of facing each other on opposite sides of the motherboard. This also only takes M.2 2280 SSDs. Okay, the next thing we have to talk about is the NVMe installation because um, that process sucked. And let me explain why. So first off, these eight NVMe SSDs all have little tiny screws. And so if you wanna get a drive out, you have to undo a screw, get the drive out. These should be toolless. Just about every server that we see these days uses a screwless design. They have little latches that they keep these things in place. You're gonna notice that we have heat sinks on all of these SSDs. But something you're also gonna notice is that like the SSDs on this side, I know are the crucial P3 Plus SSDs, whereas the ones that are on this side are the S660 SSDs. The reason that I know that is because you're gonna notice that there are two rubber bands on the heat sinks that are on these SSDs, but only one here. Here. You might ask, hey Patrick, why didn't you put two on that side? And the reason is really simple. In order to put these SSDs heat sinks on, what you have to do is you have to go and get the little thermal pad that the TerraMaster folks include. You then have to go tear off one side of the thermal pad's plastic protective cover. You then place it on the SSD. Your next step is you would take off the other side, put the heat sink on top, and it's a little bit of a fumbly process. A lot of times you're gonna end up pulling the thermal pad off of the SSD when you do that. There's just not much you can do about it. Now that thermal pad is pretty adhesive actually. You can definitely hold the SSD upside down from the heat sink when it's attached, but to be a little bit safer, you're gonna wanna go and put rubber bands on because that keeps the SSD attached to the heat sink. Even if you know something happens when it gets warmed up or cool or whatever, you just wanna have a extra bit of security. Now you're supposed to usually use two rubber bands per heat sink, so that way, even if one fails, you got another one and fail these things did. The problem is that even though I've done this process many times before, the fact is that just sides of heat sinks are sharp because they're right angles. And because of that, you tend to start losing rubber bands when you put them on. And TerraMaster definitely knows they give you extra, but we managed to break a total of five extras. So we only have three left and we can't complete two per SSD because uh, we just broke too many of these. It ended up being like an hour long process that was just totally annoying. I like, this is something that I just don't love. Now, each of the SSDs only has a PCIe Gen 3 by one connection, and that's the absolute maximum it will have. So let's get into why. So when we look under this giant heatsink here, we're gonna see three main features. The first feature we're gonna see in the middle is a huge amount of thermal paste on an Intel N305 processor, which is actually the Intel Core i three and 305. This is an Alder Lake N processor that has eight cores, eight threads. These are all efficient cores. It also has a iGPU. So you do have a little, you know, integrated GPU in this as well, which is always nice. The other thing is that the N305 only has nine PCIe lanes. So you could use one lane for your 10 gigabit networking. You also would use eight for your NVMe SSDs and you would think, oh, so they don't need PCIe switches, right? And that is incorrect. There's actually an AS Media ASM2806, which is a six lane, four port PCIe switch that's on board. Also, you can see that the TerraMaster folks are planning to have, or were planning to have, 
potentially a dual network interface version of this system. And you might not believe me, but if you look right here next to the 10 gig port that's populated right here, there's another unplaced component pad, you know, set up here that's for something that is LAN 2. So they clearly have a dual port LAN version of this that they haven't released and maybe they will at some point, who knows? But on the other hand, I just kind of wish, I don't know, I wish there was a second nick on here. The last thing I want to point out is that in the corner over here, you're going to see that we have an internal USB port and that's really there for your firmware image. Next, let's get to the overall setup experience with this and just kind of what you get with the TerraMaster OS. But then after that, we're going to get to the performance, power consumption and noise because I think a lot of folks want to see that. The overall setup for this is super easy. You're gonna go plug in your power adapter as well as a network port. Then you're gonna go fire the thing up, wait a couple seconds until you hear three beeps. Once you do that, you can go and look for the NAS on your network. Once you're there, you have a guided setup process. One thing I didn't like is the fact that it asked you for your email address when you're setting this up. I think it's just like, nobody wants to give out their email address for this kind of stuff, guys. Like, please don't make people do that. During that setup process, you're gonna be asked to pick which SSDs you're using. And since we're using two different types of SSDs, I said, hey, for the OS image, we're gonna go put that in two different SSDs, two different brands, because I just kind of thought, well, why not have a little bit of that kind of redundancy? Then we let the system go and do its thing. Now the overall setup, took just around 10 minutes. It says it's gonna take around 10, it's probably more like nine or so, but it was pretty fast. It was enough time that you can go grab a sandwich, come back, and you're ready to go. That, at that point, after you've created all your username, and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna log into the system. You're gonna have to go create a volume because of course you're gonna need to go and set this up. Now this is something that, um, you know, I think folks should at least know about. My choice of RAID levels when setting this up was T-RAID. Now you might not know what T-RAID is. I think it stands for like Terra Master RAID, but I would have liked to just have something like RAID 5. TerraMaster actually has this T-RAID thing, so that way if you use different size disks in a NAS, then it can go and dynamically say like, okay, I want to do RAID 1 here, RAID 5 here, and get you the most capacity and redundancy that they can. So from a user perspective, I think that's great. If you are a power user, then you probably just want to say like, here's my drives, I want to have say RAID 5 or something, and then let's go. For your file system, you can pick BTRFS or EXT4. I just use EXT4 because why not? But if you're going to let me make that, kind of decision, then I really just want to be able to pick RAID 5, RAID 6, or whatever I want. There is something here that I think we need to talk about that's kind of a performance thing, but it's kind of just an initial setup thing, which is really just the initialization of the RAID array. Now this T-RAID thing, um, it is not fast. So using four terabyte SSDs, eight of them gives us 32 terabytes of raw capacity. Just setting up using our T-RAID, it was giving us over 600 minutes to initialize the array. That is for an SSD array, absolutely silly, especially when you don't have any data on it. The other side to it is that as it was initializing, it was using something like 10% of the CPU. It wasn't using, you know, the entire CPU. So it's kind of like one of those things where you see that clearly it's not using all the hardware to its fullest extent. And you're just kind of wondering why the heck it takes so long to initialize. Now the TerraMaster NAS OS is, um, it's okay, right? Like frankly, you can do the basic things like, hey, I wanna go set up a share. You can also do things like SMB3 multi-channel, which is awesome, you should definitely go do that. But you're also a long way from something like a true NAS where you have just tons of knobs all the heck over the place. So I don't think that TerraMaster's OS is anywhere near a QNAP just in terms of like overall features and stuff. And the other thing that you'll see that is really in places like the App Store. Like when you get to like, when do virtualization or you wanna do apps or you wanna do Docker containers or anything like that. Of course, they do have packages so you can go put Docker containers on here. You can put Portainer and all that kind of stuff. But on the other hand, I mean, the App Store, you know, it, it is pretty darn limited in terms of what it offers. And a really good example of that is I think that this would be phenomenal if you had something like a tail scale, head scale, something like that integration. Um, but this doesn't have a native app. You can find one on a third party app site, but like, why can't you get one from TerraMaster with something like that that I think is so good for a lot of folks that would be the target market of this. So I think my overall assessment of the TerraMaster OS is like, if you just want an easy, something that just, you know, you set it up, you have storage, it's on the network, and you don't really think about it after the first day that you set it up, then I think it's actually, you know, it works. But if you want to be like a power user and turns all kinds of knobs and dials, you want ZFS, you want all kinds of apps and stuff like that, there are just better ecosystems out there. And 
to me, that's kind of a bummer just because we do have an eight core, pretty darn fast CPU. And we also have 16 gigabytes of memory in this model. So like, it just feels like there could be so much, there's just so much opportunity here to do cool stuff. And we just need TerraMaster to kind of, you know, up their app store game a little bit. Okay, now in this NAS, there are more bottlenecks than you could shake a stick at. Each one of these M.2 SSDs that are PCIe Gen 3 by four can probably push anywhere between 25 and 50 gigabits per second of bandwidth, no problem. So then you take all that bandwidth for each drive, multiply that by eight, and it's not hard to figure out that the SSDs in here are capable of pushing way more just data through them than this poor little 10 gig port can handle. Now I know a lot of folks are gonna say, hey, you know, that core i3 N305 isn't so fast, isn't that the bottleneck? And from a PCIe perspective, it is certainly a bottleneck, but from a CPU performance perspective, it is way too fast for a NAS. When we're pushing data, even at 10 gigabit per speeds to the array and all that kind of stuff, we weren't even pushing 25% CPU utilization, right? Which is like two cores out of the N305. So there is absolutely plenty of CPU performance. And not only that, there's enough performance for like that, plus running a couple of apps and services in the background, assuming you can find those apps and services on the TerraMaster OS or from somewhere else. Also, as a quick note, since you have the nice Marvell AQC113C here, that's gonna be a NIC that supports multi gigabit speeds as well. Next, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise. So first off, the power consumption of this, probably figure between about 22, 23 watts on the low end, up to, I think we saw somewhere just over 40 watts at the higher end with the system. This is overall pretty much sips power, especially when you consider there are eight NVMe SSDs in here. The power break for this is 72 watts and you're probably not gonna get anywhere near there. In terms of noise, this setup is phenomenal. If you remember our QNAP E1S NAS that we just did not too long ago, that one was pretty loud, frankly. And compared to this, this thing is like pretty darn quiet to the point that I wouldn't mind having this like literally right here on the table next to me. In our 34 DBA noise floor studio, you basically can't hear the thing. Okay, so for all these, I like to have key lessons learned. And for this one, let's just start talking about what I think of this. Because like I mentioned that we're probably gonna buy a couple of these for the studio. And the reason I'm talking about the studio here is really because of the noise. The noise on this is phenomenal. Power, it's low enough that like you don't really care about the power as much, especially when you want like a NAS of this ilk. And having a studio NAS is something that I think a lot of folks will have. There's a lot of photographers, videographers, all that kind of stuff. This is the kind of NAS that would work great there. And something I think a lot of folks are just underestimating is just how much faster networking is getting, especially in video production. And let me just give you an example. This is the new stills camera that we're using. Everybody knows I think that I've been using the R5 for a long time, Canon R5. This is the Canon R5 II. And uh, this is the new fan battery grip so you can take your 8K raw footage with it. And, uh, and on this battery grip, there's actually a little two and a half gig ethernet port built into the battery grip. Now at $700, I hear you because a lot of folks are probably sitting there saying, hey, look, I can go buy an N305 system with four or something like two and a half gig NICs, maybe even like two 10 gig and a couple of two and a half gig NICs. I can go get that for, you know, maybe 300 bucks, 400 bucks, something like that. Like, why is this thing $800? I think really the reason that this is $800 is because the TerraMaster folks came up with a great hardware package, number one, and number two, they have their OS on it. So just getting a little bit real here, if you're spending maybe 120 bucks for a two terabyte drive, or maybe, you know, 240 bucks or 250 bucks for a four terabyte drive, you know, you're talking maybe one to $2,000 just for the SSDs. And that certainly costs a lot per terabyte, right? Like if you compare that to a hard drive based NAS, you're not even in the same ballpark. On the other hand, this is super light, doesn't have any moving parts, it doesn't make much noise, you can go throw it in your bag because it's small, and so I think that that's really the market that these are for. With that said, I think that the closest competitor to this is really the Asus Store Flash Store 12 Pro. To me, I actually really like that Asus Store. We've been using that 12 bay model that we purchased for the review a long time ago because, well, number one, it has 10 gig ethernet, it has 12 drives, so you can just put a lot of storage in there. I think we have a 48 terabyte configuration that we've been using for over a year now. And the other side to it is that it's the same $799 price. Now with the N305, you definitely get a better GPU, you get a better CPU, all that kind of stuff. But on the flip side, if you don't have great apps and all that kind of stuff, and you're not gonna use it for a server, you're really just gonna use it for storage, you probably have just too much 
performance on that CPU for a NAS like this. But this is also smaller than the Flash Store 6, so I think that a lot of folks who just want something more compact will like this just for that reason. Man, this ended up being a really long one for such a small little package, but I hope you guys like the look and just kind of the thoughts around this because it's really cool in some ways. There are other reasons that I think other folks will just say like, I'm gonna stay away from this, but I think it's good to present both sides. With that, if you did like this review, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.